scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Deuteronomy 31 from verse 6 to 8. Listen, by the time I'm done teaching you, believe me, a grace will come on your life this night. You will walk out of this place knowing that you encountered the grace of God in reality. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth goeth with you. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 7, we are reading to 8. And Moses called out Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage. For thou must go with these people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it verse 8 and the Lord he it is that goeth before you he will be with you and he will not fail thee neither forsake thee fear not neither be dismayed please look up whenever God speaks to you about your future God does not talk to men like he's talking to men God talks to men like he's talking to himself. Hmm. One of the ways you will know is God speaking is because when God gives you a destiny instruction, he will even start by saying fear not because the size of what he will tell you, there is no logic and no, you will feel stupid for believing in him. There are many times you will regret training your ears to hear God. Because the excuse you would have used now, you can't say it's not him that spoke to you. That God speaks to you and tells you in your lifetime, I will use you to build a house for all your 13 brothers. And he said, God, don't flatter me. Just tell me I will succeed. I will pay my school fees. As at the time God is speaking, you are hoping you are still 20% gathering the money for your rent. I told you that God does not speak sympathizing with your current situation. He speaks as touching your destiny. When he finds you hiding, he does not say, Oh thou hiding one. He says, Oh thou man of valor. The same way God is seeing someone who is weak and saying, Oh thou prophet, do you not know that that grace and that unction of the prophetic is on you? And you are saying, God, don't flatter me. The prophetic, no, but everybody was an idol worshipped by my family. The test of courage. Whoever is fearful, go back. 22,000 people, sir, went back. Let's continue. Judges 6 and... Judges 7. Now verse 4. Are you ready? So the first test is the test of courage. Maybe I should add two or three, two scriptures just to buttress on the issue of courage. Second Timothy 1 and verse 7, very popular scripture. Second Timothy 1 and verse 7, before we look at the second test. For God had not given Joshua Selman the spirit of fear. That means fear is a gift. Look up. Look at me. That when you find fear at work in you, you received it. 
anything given can be rejected is that true the bible said god has not given that means someone else gave it god has not given us the spirit of fear look how powerful fear is it takes three spiritual forces to dislodge fear power love and a sound mind don't downplay fear fear is the spirit that foreruns every other spirit every other spirit stands waiting for fear to open a door no spirit will enter a door that fear has not opened did you hear what i said every spirit is at the mercy of fear they wait patiently for fear to open that door then every other spirit can come god has not given us the spirit of fear let me tell you your destiny will require courage you will stand face to face before mountains you will stand face to face before some of you life-threatening issues maybe some of you are already even standing in front of those things who are down mountain you should say before Zerubbabel when that beast was roaring six fingers and six toes even the veterans of war in Israel became afraid and a young teenager who came to serve his brother's food he heard the voice of that beast and he went and stood there and he said what is happening who is this they said Goliath Goliath and he looked at him he said please give me a chance to do something to this man he went to Saul the brothers drove him and said go back before he kills you for nothing and he went to King Saul and Saul said from what tribe I want to know the covenant that backs you that's all I need to know when he stood before him with a sling Goliath said am I a dog I will kill you but respect me you must be such a stupid boy you come to me with a sling look at your warriors you've been you've been a shepherd with sheep your veterans are afraid and when he was done talking you would think that David would kneel down and say I'm sorry I'm just a teenager David said let me even tell you how you would die this sling will bring you down your very sword is what I will use to remove your head Ah, goodness courage can I tell you this some of you after this conference you may not have money to buy sharp sand but go and stand where that land is yes. hear me you may not have a ministry now and nobody is placing a demand on you but go to the bush where your audience is stand there and hold a stick and begin to preach like i did many years ago and decree and declare by the spirit sense the anointing there train your gifts in the bush train your anointing right there because sooner or later the one who is a way maker will make the way for you Can I tell you this? Fear puts men in bondage. Hebrews 2.15, I believe. And to deliver them who through the fear of death. 2.15 Hebrews. Where all their lifetime. That means fear can capture a man's lifetime. Do you know what a lifetime is? From when you were born till when you die. Fear can literally possess a man's lifetime. Not just moments in your destiny. A whole lifetime courageous people are those who win in our world today those who are overly conscious of what people say I made a statement who liked it who commended it you, you are ready for failure forever there are times you will have to stand alone can I tell you something you see the ways of God does not always show the wisdom behind it immediately there are times that you will look foolish for 10 years is the 11th year that will show you were wise for 11 years but the courage to stay when Noah was shouting and saying rain is coming hear me rain is coming for 120 years he was shouting they laughed at him he said I'm giving you a chance 
all the animals were wise they didn't argue as soon as they got the call in peace seven by seven two by two the animals who could run faster than men who could climb trees who were even more technical they quietly came and all the men who were helpless they stood there arguing it was god who closed the door and the bible says the rain was structured such that heaven gave its own rain earth gave its own rain what whoever it meets in the middle and that was where it killed everybody can i tell you this most of us in our world will never be great because of the fear of being alone there are people who will leave god a thousand times to gain friends there are people who abort their destiny a thousand times because of acceptance our our generation has such an obsession for acceptance don't get me wrong acceptance is one of the psychological indices that make for fulfillment i understand but let me tell you sincerely if it is destiny there are many times is at the end that the vision speaks but you don't start building at the end you start building alone foolishly sometimes and as your wisdom unfolds God now honors you once upon a time in this Lagos there were people who were tying water is that true water like what you call pure water today they were tying it in a leather you still remember and someone looked and said no water is an essential we can package this in in a in a more intelligent way do you know the risk it took what if they failed question did they fail the man who builds a hotel with 130 rooms question who signed that i will come and sleep in your hotel the pastor who buys a land and builds a church did anybody sign a covenant with him that i'll guarantee you midweek i'm there church service i am there somebody say courage my dear worshipers when you write your songs does anybody give you any guarantee that i will come and sing Everything you are celebrating today is the other side of courage. The other side of courage. The other side of courage. Seven up. You know seven up that you take? I'm sure you know how the name seven up came. Seven up just means six down, seven up. The man failed six times. Woefully. He named that product after his results. Today you drink it, but behind what you are drinking is the pain of a man. Look at me. I always wondered why God, through the prophet, would tell Naaman to go and bath seven times. God, you are mighty. What is seven? I later found out that is, there is something about the law of process that was taught in that miracle. Do you know that after Naaman took his bath six times, you thought there would be evidence of cure to encourage him he was still as dirty and scaly and as tattered as that five minutes to your miracle it will still not look like it this is the thing about god that you have to understand <laughs> can i tell you this go and ask elijah he prayed and said check for me nothing prayed and said check for me nothing seven times even the sixth time nothing the same way you are seated today you don't know it's tomorrow that prophecy has written that you will be smiling as it is right now nothing is in your life ah. my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by the prophet said by this time tomorrow you thought a cloud would suddenly start moving and the nation of israel said wow a cloud is forming after the prophet spoke i'm sure even him he went back and said god i've spoken don't let these people kill me a woman that can eat her child is it a prophet she will not eat
by the next day everybody woke up where is that stupid prophet playing with our intelligence in the name of the Lord you said today this is that day they forgot it was God that made the day four lepers why sit we here and die let's go and die in the place where there is plenty there's a lesson there it's better to die in a place of supply than to run away out of fear the, the guys were wise they said anyway we are going to die so it's wiser and cheaper and when they took that step of faith the Lord amplified them and it was like the sound of chariots and they said ah Samaria has now gathered allies to come and fight us when they got there all they saw was supplies can I tell you this someone by this teaching you are receiving the courage to do something that four years ago you wrote it God told you start you've been afraid and sitting there go and register the company oh God you know the way Nigeria is now I'm waiting until my uncle he said he's contesting for election woe to him who puts his strength in a man if God gives you the marching order sustain the courage and the grace to go can I tell you sometimes you will fail obeying God oh I wish you would not there are times you will fail obeying God when you fail obeying God allow the one who takes the glory to also take the shame You've always heard me say this if you are the one taking the shame you have been taking the glory too it's a deal whoever takes when you say god take everything you mean take both the glory and the shame if on account of my hearing you this shame comes upon me take responsibility for my obedience please sit down let me give us the last test <laughs> The price for new dimensions. Price number one is the price of courage. Unbending resoluteness that is not outsourced but generated. Lord, I know you have spoken to me that from this family where no one has risen, that you are going to lift me and the nations will celebrate your workings upon my life I believe what is the next step start moving to where keep moving do you believe I am God keep moving to where to Lagos Lord I'm in Lagos what is the next step trust me what kind of answer is that and all your classmates call you and say oh is it your picture I saw in NMPC you say for where I'm still here I'm in Lagos and they said but you too you know some of you sometimes you can be very stupid and you just stand and say Lord everybody may seem to have moved forward maybe that's someone's testimony now God just locked you up and all you are doing is praying and fasting praying and fasting studying scripture praying and fasting reading books praying and fasting praying and fasting and then learning materials you know so much but the platform to put it to work is not there God is doing something with you let me warn you if God says wait wait every time you rush seasons you will always give birth to the Ishmael that will fight Isaac God is a God of speed but God does not rush two days to your breakthrough Satan can bring an offer in one day that can make you birth Ishmael and forever you will have to live with that battle. Part of the way we gain speed is by waiting. It's a mystery that when we wait, we truly run. Is someone learning? Obtain courage. Do not fear. Refuse fear. When angels appear, they tell men, fear not. It is for a reason. Test number two judges seven four Shabranda hmm. are you ready for the second test now this one in fact if you did not get anything i shared here please don't forget this this 
is a life-changing secret that I want to share with you now. You will thank your man of God for the rest of your life if you get what I'm showing you now. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. The first test reduced them, but there are still 10,000 others. He said, bring them unto the water and I will try them for you there. Listen carefully. And it shall be that of whom I say to you, this is the one who goes with you from that test, then he shall go with you. What is the test? Verse 5. Please give us verse 5. So he brought the people onto the water. Are you ready now? And the Lord said to Gideon, they are going to approach their interaction with this water in two ways. Study them and use their encounter with this water to filter them. Everyone that lapped on the water with his tongue as a dog lapped, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink. Look up. Let me teach you a mystery here. Do you know what this means? Don't forget that when he called them, they came out of their homes. They had started walking. Some of them returned. That means everybody had left home. Their energy had been spent. Are you getting the point now? Now he brought them to the place of some level of resolve. And because of the result in the fellowship, no more prayer, no more hearing God. You are now bowing down to drink that water. I'm happy with the 10,000 that is coming. I'm happy with the 30 members. There is no pressing, no fasting, no building. Gideon study their approach to that which gives them comfort at this level. The assignment of water is to quench your test. When you are a thirsty man who has been working for a long time, when you see water, you will not know there are other treasures in the war front greater than that water. Is someone getting that now? The second test. You see, let me tell you this. There is, you have to conquer the deception of current success. You, you want to go forward, you must conquer the deception of complacency that comes as a result of your current achievements it is not only failure that kills success kills more than failure many people stop working with god many people deflated their passion for growth their passion to be mentored their passion to learn after all there's results now i've started prophesying it's not very clear but i've started prophesying here and there the anointing has started working it looks like a few members are coming now and god is saying this is only a test gideon study them this test you will not find out immediately it will take time for you to know those who will separate who will be separated and he said anyone have you ever seen a dog settle when a dog is eating it does not eat and lie down and just remain there it's ready to move in fact parts of the body is already moving once it is done it moves to what it was doing before that temporary success it says those who lap they are still on their feet they are just fetching it my feet my instrument of motion is still in place but those who bow down upon their knees 
to bow down means to make it Lord over you. You have made the success Lord over you. You have made the little exposure consume you such that you've forgotten that you were on a mission. Is someone learning now at the same time? Hear me. I'm telling you why you see people gaining momentum, doing certain things, and at a point you will know that this preacher, he's not backsliding, but he has plateaued. There's nothing else to learn from him. And can I tell you, this generation is very unforgiving over exhaustion. The moment they, they discern that you have, you have rounded up your syllables, they will respect you and build a monument around your, your refusal for continuity. Of the blueprint he keeps adding. And we say, Lord, my desire is to give you glory. And he says, then I will keep giving you the platform to keep giving me glory. Please look at me, we're wrapping up. There are many preachers who have failed this test. There are many business people. You are a preacher here, please don't, as much as possible, don't miss the, the pastor's conference tomorrow. By the privilege of God's grace, I'll be sharing with you certain keys that will help you. Tonight's service, before you receive, is a service of genuine repentance. Lord, I didn't know that the river you brought me to was only a test. The one house you gave me, the visa you gave me to tour Europe. And when I returned back, I said, nobody should come and invite me anywhere where they will give me $1,000 again. Oh dear. After all, I went round. Believers and all those who are connecting, learn a lesson from this. It is a real price to watch success and still be on a mission while people clap for you. Do you know, most times when I finish meetings, sincerely I'm telling you, no matter how great and how wonderful the meeting is, that venue and then ICC and the rates were something else but ICC they would not give it for that frequency of programs and then this one that God brought us by his grace it was about the biggest auditorium that can be given for that is not built as a church auditorium not even discussing the price per use you won't believe it and then I sent a delegation to meet the man and the man said no way Pentecostal scattered chairs, they scattered this. I invested so much, I'm not ready to lose my money for nothing. And I said, God, but you spoke to me. I'm not saying, the, I hope you, I, I hope. The highest royalty, I am undone before your glorious majesty. Shalakata brande kaparato sadilakata. Someone pray. The test of courage. The Lord, when you speak, I will not only listen, I will move. If I fail, let me fail hearing you. My soul, fear not. My soul, fear not over your finances my soul fear not over your spiritual life my soul fear not in the name of jesus christ fear not he stands behind you like a mighty terrible one now pray over the second test lord as you lift me take away the influence of my results over my life let it not influence me to a point that i forget you to a point that i stop living by the values that brought me that honor someone lift your voice and cry before your maker 
Let it not be that when you have built houses, and your flocks and herds are multiplied, that you will say, My power and the might of my hand has given me this way. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you to help us. You have used the life of Gideon and the strategy that empowered him to use 300 men and defeat the Midianites. Lord, there are mountains, there are heights, there are levels and there are realms that we have not gotten to, that we need to get to. We are in seasons in our lives where we need to make notable advancements notable progress lord we pray that the test of courage may we pass that test the test of courage may we pass that test the test of courage may we pass that test and then oh god i pray that as you honor us and as you give us results before the nations before our contemporaries before all men may you grant us the stamina to not be distracted by results Amen. that we will celebrate your hand and your workings in our lives but not to the detriment of our advancement help us oh God that in the midst of our results may we remain focused Amen. may we remain disciplined Amen. May we remain spiritual. Amen. May we remain committed. Amen. May we remain humble. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, as we humble ourselves before you, let there be no limit to the degree and the dimension with which you will lift us. Amen. Now in the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with the angel over this house and then the graces that are here represented and I decree and declare over your life that the courage to keep moving until you leap over a wall until you cross barriers to the next season may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you for anyone here who probably because of mistakes that you have made the glory that you once enjoyed it is now ichabod it looks like the dimension of lifting you experienced has seemed to leave you the relationships the connections right now i declare the same grace that grew back the hair of samson i stand by the power of the prophetic let there be restoration now Restoration of relationships. Restoration of dignity. Restoration of finances. Restorations of joy. And by the power of the prophetic, like Moses commanded the nation of Israel to go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, go forward. Go forward to new heights, to new levels, to new dimensions spiritually go forward financially go forward in the name of Jesus Christ and every power that has fought you until this conference to not allow you breakthrough powers of ancestry orchestrations in heavenly places I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I have a table in the name of Jesus be delivered from those powers now let there be testimonies for you 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ testimonies in ministry testimonies in family testimonies in your walk with God finally I pray for you everything that has stolen your passion for God your passion for prayer your passion for the secret place your zeal for spiritual things distractions that have come through relationships distractions that have come through your results in the name of Jesus I fan the flames of your spiritual life I fan the flames of your prayer life I fan the flames of your word life in the name of Jesus Christ to everyone who is sick in body I declare be healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit please we have to wrap up now I didn't have the time to prophesy and pray but if the man of God does allow you please even if you are not a pastor if they do allow you please do come tomorrow because I'll have a session to teach and let me have some time to prophesy and also pray for the sick and just declare release over your destiny may the Lord bless you and honor you in Jesus name hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.